In the course of our research, we very occasionally get things wrong or not wholly correct. And as we strive for accuracy in our videos and channel, we try to ensure that when we do find a mistake, or a viewer points out an error based on solid evidence, that we go back and correct that error. After all, that is what the process of investigation is all about. Reporting our research, getting feedback, and then making necessary adjustments, so that in the end, the most accurate picture emerges. In this video, we'll revisit a few points raised during the first three segments of our Chicago Great Western series, and provide updates based on those items. The Bellwood Station between Maywood and South Elmhurst is an example where we fell short in telling a complete story of this rather complicated station history. Jerry Hund, intrepid railway researcher and former resident of Bellwood, challenged our proposed location for the Bellwood Station, based on research he had been doing for the past few years. Recall that we had placed the station close by the Indiana Harbor Belt underpass, either on the northeast corner of this crossing or the southwest corner. But Jerry disputed that location and provided primary sources to indicate that the station was located in at least one or two other locations in Bellwood. And so, based upon Jerry's research, plus our own additional findings, we'll attempt to tell a more complete story of this complicated and enigmatic station, based on three primary lines of evidence. Maps, newspaper clippings, and train timetables. We say enigmatic, as even with this additional research, there are still many open questions, all the more perplexing given that Bellwood was in a heavily trafficked area and in the thick of railway operations. For example, we have yet to see any definitive photograph of this station in any location, and in general, we have only a few instances of primary sources for this station location. By primary sources, we mean evidence that is contemporary with the events and recorded by first-hand observers. In this case, examples of primary evidence might include dated photographs, first-hand newspaper accounts, contemporary maps, contemporary records, and so on. Recall that Bellwood was incorporated as a village in 1900, relatively late compared to surrounding communities and largely as a reaction to Maywood's potential annexation and shutdown of taverns within the Bellwood subdivision. The origins of the Bellwood name, as originally incorporated with two E's, remains obscure. Explanations vary, but most have to do with the name given to a local grove of trees, as being either beautiful, or belle in French, or as being where young ladies, belles, met their beaux. The second E seems to have been dropped, possibly accidentally, sometime in the 1910s or 1920s. The first Bellwood Chicago Great Western Station was built in the 1890 time frame and was located east of Bellwood Avenue, between St. Paul Avenue to the north and Warren Avenue to the south. Today, this would put it at the southeast corner of the intersection of Bellwood Avenue and Georgina Lane perhaps 100 feet north of the Illinois Prairie Path. The evidence for this station location includes contemporary maps from newspaper advertisements, at a time when the subdivision of Bellwood was being heavily promoted by housing developers. This was also at a time when you could purchase a lot in Bellwood for $125, or up to $600 for the most choice lots. Secondary sources, which consisted of later histories of Bellwood, also put the Chicago Great Western Station at this location, stating that the station additionally included the local Bellwood Post Office, at least until the mid to late 1890s, when the post office moved to a storefront near St. Paul and Bolin Avenues, just a few hundred feet away. Maps from 1897, 1899, and 1903 also put the Bellwood Station at the Bellwood Avenue location. The station appears to have been in existence until at least the early 1900s, and possibly as late as the mid-1910s, as it is shown in some detailed plat maps dated to 1914. The 1914 map indicates that the station was sizable, approximately 55 feet by 15 feet in dimension, with a long wooden platform extending in both directions. 
Given the time frame when this station was built, we can surmise that it closely resembled other CGW stations built at the same time. In other words, the classic Victorian stick style of the Chicago Great Western. But this detailed 1914 map is not necessarily definitive, as other pieces of evidence from approximately the same time frame indicate a different station location. For example, maps from 1904, 1910, and 1913 place the Bellwood Station to the east of Eastern Avenue, between St. Paul Avenue to the north and Madison Avenue to the south. Today, this location would be about 50 feet east of Eastern Avenue, between Georgina Lane to the north and Madison Street to the south, about 100 feet north of the Illinois Prairie Path, and almost a quarter of a mile east of the previously described Bellwood Avenue Station location. Was the Bellwood Avenue Station moved to this new location at Eastern Avenue, or was a new station built in the early part of the 20th century? To complicate things even more, we have a 1911 map which suggests that the Bellwood Station was close by the Indiana Harbor Belt Crossing, where we had originally placed the station location. So what's going on here? Are some of these maps simply mistaken or wrong? How can the Bellwood Station be located at Bellwood Avenue until the mid-1910s, while at the same time be located at Eastern Avenue? And what do we make of the 1911 map showing the Bellwood Station close to the IHB exchange? There are a few other lines of evidence that may help to clarify or possibly add to the confusion. For example, there are a few newspaper clippings from 1901 that make reference to a West Bellwood Station. At least one Chicago Great Western timetable from the same period also references the West Bellwood Station. Were there two stations in Bellwood during the late 1800s and early 1900s, with the West Bellwood Station being the one located at Bellwood Avenue? This is certainly within reason. After all, Maywood had two stations during this time period, so it's feasible that there may have been a second Bellwood Station, at least for a period of time. Another line of evidence comes from period Chicago Great Western timetables. The great thing about timetables is that they list the distance from the terminal, in this case the Chicago terminal, and thereby also denote the distance between stations. The public timetables only provide a low level of precision, while the employee timetables show a greater precision for this distance measurement. If we examine the timetable distances from the late 1890s through the 1950s, we see that something changes for the Bellwood Station distances in the 1909 to 1911 timeframe. The distance to the Elmhurst Station appears to increase, while the distance to the Maywood Station appears to decrease and stabilizes sometime around 1911, where it settles in as being 1.5 miles from the Maywood Station and 3.7 miles from the Elmhurst Station for the duration of its existence. In fact, if we plot out this Bellwood timetable location on Google Maps, 1.5 miles from the Maywood Station and 3.7 miles from the Elmhurst Station along the CGW line, we find ourselves almost spot on on the IHB interchange. Now you might say that these were only rough numbers, but railway civil engineers certainly understood the difference between 1.6 or 1.7 miles versus 1.5 miles, especially when these values were published annually over the course of several years and even decades. Railway civil engineers were trained to be ruthlessly efficient and would have known the mileage between stations with great precision. So what does all of this suggest regarding the Bellwood Station location? We can say with certainty that the original Bellwood Station was located along Bellwood Avenue, likely in the 1892-1910 time frame. But the fact that the station was not mentioned in the Traveler's Official Guide to the Railways and Steam Navigation Lines throughout the 1890s strongly suggests that the station saw little traffic. Around the turn of the century, this station appears to have been referred to as West Bellwood, at least for a period of time. A second Bellwood station then appears shortly after 1900 to the east of Eastern Avenue. 
This station may have been around for a decade or so. Whether it replaced the depot on Bellwood Avenue, or whether it was a second station, perhaps more focused on freight, being closer to the IHB interchange, is not entirely clear. Then eventually, there appears to be a final shift further east in the 1911 time frame to a location close by the IHB interchange, which focused primarily on freight with limited passenger traffic. Perhaps the station moved to the east was also in recognition of the fact that at that time, the population of Bellwood was heavily skewed towards the east portion of the village. But was there room for a passenger or freight station close by the IHB crossing? In the first episode of this series, we suggested that the station was one of the wooden buildings that existed to the northeast of the crossing. But Jerry Hunt provided evidence from a few sources that indicated that these buildings were instead maintenance sheds rather than a depot or station. A better candidate to emerge was the building that stood to the southwest of the crossing and which served primarily as a railway switching center and was known as the Bellwood Interlocking Tower, a building jointly owned by the Indiana Harbor Belt and the Chicago Great Western Railways. Originally built of wood when the IHB crossing was at grade, this tower was later heightened and reconstructed in brick when the IHB exchange was substantially remodeled in the 1930s. Recall that this location was the second alternative we had proposed in our first video. The second story of this building was a switching room with visual line of sight to each of the railways, the Indiana Harbor Belt, the Chicago Aurora and Elgin, and the Chicago Great Western, where energetic and nimble operators manually set the configuration of the many switches that controlled the lines entering and exiting the heavily used IHB crossing and exchange. The first floor of this structure, however, does not appear to have had any specific use, and as the building was sizable, would have been suitable for the modest amount of passenger traffic that the station might have seen in the 1920s to 1950s. There is also at least one anecdotal report that the first floor of this building did serve as a station and as a mailroom. Interestingly, a new switch tower was built in 1917 to replace an interlocking tower that had burned down in late 1916, shortly after the shift in timetable distances between stations seems to have occurred. It may be that the Chicago Great Western took advantage of the rebuild to incorporate a small passenger waiting area in the new structure and thereby consolidate the messy Bellwood Station situation into a single location, more focused on freight operations, which mostly occurred at the IHB interchange. The 1939 aerial photos of the area confirmed that there was no trace of depots at either the Bellwood Avenue location or the Eastern Avenue location, indicating that they were long gone by this time. We hope that this explanation provides a fuller and more complete history of the Chicago Great Western's Bellwood Station, based upon research provided by Jerry Hund, as well as our own investigations. But as we indicated, there are still many open questions about this station's history, which may be cleared up as new evidence surfaces. A second minor mistake that we wanted to clear up was regarding the distance from the Chicago Grand Central Station to the St. Charles Station. At the beginning of our third video in this series, we incorrectly stated the distance as being 15 miles, which was an overlooked typo, but was thankfully noticed by at least one alert viewer. The correct distance should have been stated as being 36 miles. A third correction that we'll make is that it turns out that the Great Western Trail is in fact open all of the way into downtown Sycamore. When we made the journey in the autumn of 2021, Google Maps showed the trail as only going to the eastern edge of Sycamore, not crossing over the Kishwaukee River. And in fact, it still shows that as being closed. If nothing else, we showed that you can either drive along the trail or ride on the trail between former CGW stations in St. Charles and Sycamore, Illinois. We again want to thank our viewers who have pointed out errors or partial truths when backed by solid evidence as that enables us to not only correct those errors, 
but also to ultimately tell a richer and more complete story. And as always, if you like our videos and channel, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you, in a manner of speaking, in the next video.